live video series. This is it, it's here, the 2022 Kia Seltos. It's been a long time with 2021 Seltos because they basically showed up in March of 2020. And the reason I say it's been a long time is because they showed up around the same time COVID showed up. So if you think of how long COVID's been going on, that's how long we've had the 2021 Seltos. Now the 2022 arrived and it does have a few tweaks and changes. Of course it is logo centric, logo changes, uh, but there's a few other little changes that I found and they're just minor. So we're gonna go over this vehicle fully in depth in the next half hour or so. If you've never been with us before, you can skip ahead to that three minute mark. If, if you're not live with us, you can skip ahead to that three minute mark and that's where we'll get digging into the content and spend about a half an hour going through this vehicle. If you are live with us, uh, you can hang out with me and if they didn't skip ahead, they get to find out how to join us and we get to hear some news and notes and other stuff that's going on. All right. Flipping around over here, you'll see I have a 2021 sitting right here. 2022 is there. We will compare because some of this is a little different as well. All right, if you want to join us live, you can just simply uh, go to our YouTube page, which is right here. If you refresh the page exactly at 2 o'clock, you will see the live video show up right here on the home screen there. Sorry about the glare. Let's just turn this around a little bit there. All right, a little bit less glare. Come on, camera. All right, so a little bit less glare there. You'll see how to join us. Uh, click into this video. While we're clicking on that, you're going to have to watch an ad, but I'm going to quickly do a quick promotion for us. A lot of people want to know, where are we? We are Brantford Kia. We are Brantford Hyundai, and we are Owen Sound Hyundai. If you are interested in Ontario in buying a Kia or Hyundai vehicle, let us be your local dealer, and uh, just uh, reach out to me when this video is done. There will be a link in the description below, and you'll be able to reach out to me there. All right, we've got 32 people on already. So anybody wants to hit that like button, that would help us out. We're going to get going at the three minute mark of this video. We're just letting our live audience jump in here for a minute. So uh, going to flip around here. If you are here for the very first time, drop a note, say hi. So uh, people are reminding me to get the keys and my teddy bear because those are two things I often forget. My teddy bear has a very important role in this video. And if you've never joined us before and that sounds silly to you, it should. That makes you normal. That makes me weird, but makes you normal. Anyways, hope everybody had a good Father's Day. I had a good time with my kids, had a good time. Uh, stopped by my parents' place, saw them too. All right, so what's going on in Kia News, Hyundai News? Ionic 5 stuff, still waiting. Santa Cruz, still waiting. Probably that will come after I take a little vacation this summer. So I'm going to take a little bit of vacation. Um, we will continue to have Kia and Hyundai stuff. Uh, a lot of 2022 starting to roll into all the dealerships now. Uh, and of course, we'll cover them in depth. Not a whole lot of major introductions in some of the regular things, something like the Kia Seltos today, not a whole lot of major things new, but still there are some tweaks, and I'm hoping that's why you tune in. That's uh, sort of what we specialize in, is some of those tweaks and differences there. All right, 10 seconds to go. We'll get going in just a second here, and um, if you haven't dropped the like button already, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you're one of our regulars, uh, maybe you can drive If I have to earn it, that's cool too. All right, three minutes in, here we go. 2022 Kia Selto. So those of you that are just joining us for the very first time, uh, we do have extra vehicles in this video bay. We will not be talking about the 2022 Kia Stinger over here. We will not be talking about the 21 Seltos very much, but it is here for a comparison. And we will be going through this EX Premium model in detail. Now, what will be helpful comparing these two is this is a 2022, this is a 2021, and this is a much lower trim, an LX all-wheel drive. So some of those things are not unchanged between model years, and I will be able to point out to you some of those differences between these two. First thing I'm going to point out is the new key. If you went to my Instagram page today, you've already seen a picture just like this. Now, I don't know if I can show it on video, but if you can see the Kia logo there, uh, let me just see if I can get in the light for a second here. Um, there is a little bit of a texture yeah see those vertical lines there a little bit of a texture to that kia logo on the key which is pretty cool because the new kia logos here also have that same kind of lined texture so it is really an identical look on your key fob and inside and outside now again one of the things that people have asked me is the 2021 Celtos, will I be able to rebadge it with the new logo now you can see on the white paint it's a little harder to show up although this white ex premium i would say is probably the most color most popular color package, uh, most desirable anyways. We've had w requests for white EX premiums for a long time. So we have one here, uh, but can you swap the logo from your old one? You cannot. And the reason you cannot is this one has an indent here around that oval logo. And that is gonna prevent you from throwing that new logo, just rip this one off, put the new one on, that will not happen. So that's the new logo on the front. Uh, new logo on the wheels, of course, Standard stuff here. The wheels are unchanged on this trim line. You do have a new uh, inserts there. You could swap those between cars. You also have a new logo on the rear here. And 
this was a controversial one. Some people in the dealership here, um, some like it, some think it doesn't show up enough on the silver. But again, you can see those vertical lines through there, or sorry, horizontal lines through there. Uh, that is kind of the way these logos are coming in now. Looks pretty sharp, I think. It looks good. And uh, over here, you'll see over here, again, you can't swap it out again because this silver trim curls up and so does the painted metal surface. It curls up in that oval shape, whereas over here, the silver section is sort of squared up and squared in to the metal section as well. So can you swap the logo from old to new? No. Another thing you're gonna stop seeing on a lot of our cars with these new logos, which are 2022 cars, you'll stop seeing the trim line over here. Now on the other, uh, the uh, Celtos over there, we don't have trim lines because the LX doesn't label them, but some of the higher trim levels were also labeling EX plus or turbo engine or those kind of things. You're gonna stop seeing that in the 2022 models. So let's dig into what's new on the inside of this car. And uh, let me just uh, start by showing you that key again. So key has the remote start on there. That's pretty standard stuff. Same buttons over there. So this is again, pretty standard stuff. Once you put this key in your pocket, you never have to take it out again. So put it in your purse, put it in your pocket, whatever suits you. And I won't need it for anything else in this video. There is a little button there. You can program it to one tap unlock just the driver's door or and sorry, and it'll, it'll come project one tap to unlock the driver's door. A double tap will unlock all the doors. You can program it to do one tap to unlock all doors, which is what I do on my Kia Soul EV. Excuse the dirt down here. This is the way they come from uh, compound, which is all dirt. This was the Peter clean. So this got cleaned on the outside by me, but it was not at all detailed. Down here in the EX premium model, this is a loaded model. It's the model I recommend. You have the powered seats with the power lumbar. It is an artificial leather. And I'm a huge fan of this leather. I don't usually like leather very much. If you're a leather person, you're gonna like this a lot because it feels soft, has a nice grippiness to it. Uh, I like it for that reason as well. It doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold, but on this particular model, you don't have to worry about that because you have heated and ventilated seats, which also do not make it too hot or too cold. You can get really, oops, let's turn the, actually push button start, we'll show over here. So. So there we go, push button start over there. Just turn it to the on position because we are indoors, we can't start the car. And you can see heated seats, three levels of heated seats there. I like to call them rump roasters and ventilated seats as well. Three levels of ventilated seats. Now, really quickly on the ventilated seats on this car, a lot of ventilated seats and a lot of manufacturers, they kind of take the heat out of the seat. These ones have strong enough fans and I guess large enough ventilation uh, holes there that they actually uh, make the seats feel cool. So it's uh, really keeps you from sweating, but actually cools the seat down, keeps you very comfortable as well. Heated seat steering wheel is pretty common on these vehicles as well. Uh, you've got the four wheel drive lock button, which you almost never have to use. If you don't know anything about our all wheel drive system, stay tuned. We'll talk about that in a minute, a few minutes actually. Uh, ventilated seats there, hill descent control there, and your drive modes over here. So again, a lot of stuff that hasn't changed here, but again, this is a class leading car in a lot of ways, especially for the money. Speaking of the money, about 300 bucks more for this uh, near top trim than last year. So I don't know if that's what the logos cost now, but that's probably just the way they do business now. Drive modes, you're gonna tilt it like that or tilt it like that. And you're gonna see over here, what happens is we're in the normal mode, we're in the smart mode and we're in the sport mode. So let's just talk about that real quickly. A real nice display screen in here. There we go. So let's talk about that smart mode. Normal mode, it's the way it comes equipped from the factory. It's kind of the way you would want it. Uh, it is what it is. It's just normal. Smart mode is the new eco mode. So smart mode is going to make it very economical, except as you get into the throttle, it will go, oh, you want a little more speed. I'm going to put you in normal mode. You get really deep into the throttle. Oh, you're driving sporty. I'm going to give you the sport mode, which is going to hold the revs longer, which is going to make it a little bit more aggressive to drive that way. Um, the sp sport mode um, is a lot of fun. Of course, it uses a little bit extra fuel. The smart mode is what I really recommend driving this vehicle in. I just think it works the best. It is an IVT transmission. If you shift it yourself, which you can do right here, you can put it in drive like this. You can tap it this way. And if you shift yourself, you're going to have eight different ratios to go through uh, to take some control if that's what you want to do. And let's be honest, on this class of car, very few people are going to do that. Some of you are asking some questions and don't worry, I will get to your questions in the next few minutes here. We're going to stay 30 minutes on topic. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to get to all of your questions and then we'll come back and then we'll continue to take questions from that point on. Uh, no, so don't feel afraid to ask them now, uh, but I will get to them in just a few minutes here. All right, looking in the dash here again, left side tack, right side speedometer, speed, uh, the speed, 
digital speedometer is always there on the right side. You've got a lot of information in here, but it's very clearly laid out. So you can just see through here, there's your drive modes. Remember I said normal mode? Uh, so even though it's in the, well, actually, let's turn to the smart mode here. There we go, smart mode. It'll say smart eco, smart normal, or smart sport. Smart eco, so there you go. Once it's set to the smart mode, if you're doing most of your driving, there's a bar graph that starts in the center and moves to the econ side or the dynamic side. Uh, when you're driving, if you're doing most of your driving in the economy mode, then it puts you in eco mode automatically. And that's really helpful for people who keep it in normal mode because they want a little bit of punch, but this will save you some fuel. And then when you get into the dynamic mode more often, it's going to say, hey, I'm going to keep you in the nor normal mode or even the sport mode if you want to. So really smart design there. And the other thing that's kind of cool is just keep moving through this uh, screen here. Uh, let's see, oops, that's your navigation screen. I am looking for, there we go. There's your bar graph, which shows how your all-wheel drive system works. So you can see the bottom half is only half the size of the top half. Basically what it means is this starts out in all-wheel drive and it can move 50% of the power to the rear wheels. So you would have 50%, which means a full rear bar graph and then half front bar graph. And as you maintain traction, it'll put that power back to the front. This is a color bar graph that you can watch work while you drive. And when it does that, you can see what's happening with your all-wheel drive system. So I really want to point this out. If you're driving this vehicle in poor weather conditions or whatever else, a lot of vehicles, the front wheels used to have to slip and lose traction. And then the rear wheels would have to be set power, try to gain traction and regain traction. This car is going to start out in all-wheel drive and move that power to the front as it maintains traction. It's a huge difference between the competitor systems that are what we call slip and grip systems. You lose traction and Kia does everything it can to add traction. In this car, you have traction and it'll do everything it can to maintain traction. So I see some comments coming in through there. I will get to them in just a second here. All right, let's take a look over here as well. Okay, so here's where some differences come in. Again, a lot of information here. We don't have to show you everything, but if you want to see everything, we'll do that in this video. I have no problem going through that. Let's jump over here. We've got this really clear backup camera. This is the uh, same thing. You've got the guest mode, driver one, driver two. I can set it to anything I want. Right now it's on the guest mode. When I throw it in reverse, you've got a new backup camera system, and this is smart. Now it may not work because I am indoors. There we go, it is working. So what you can do here is you can cycle through some of these uh, information pieces over here. So for instance, when I'm uh, backing up in my car, I get basically a blank screen. On my particular car, I can adjust the screen here, uh, brightness, contrast, you can still do that with this. Or on the old Celtos, it used to be just a blank screen on this extra wide screen. So this is a 10 and a quarter inch screen. So if you're used to an eight inch screen, this is basically what this eight inch screen used to be. Now you're 10 and a quarter, but this used to be blank. So those new software, they're like, let's make use of that. And this one right here is the most useful thing to me because sometimes I'm backing out of the drive and I just catch the tail end of a song and I go, what was that song? Well, now I can see it. Now, I don't know why you would not navigation up. Uh, where's my navigation? Navigation, now, of course, that'll be uh, a lighter color. It thinks we're in the dark because we are indoors. You can have navigation while you're backing up. I don't know that you'll need that, but the point is they're now making use of this space, which I think is better than it was uh, in the past. So even if you just want to keep the weather information up, there is some weather information. Again, because I'm indoors, none of these uh, features are picking up, which they would need to be outside. The other thing is I've showed you a backup camera video. It's actually been pretty popular lately um, on our Kia class series. And you can look at the backup camera in different ways. So right now we're on this uh, outside view here. You can look straight down and uh, see right below the bumper there. You can even see the license plate frame there. You can almost read it, Brantford Kia. Uh, so you can sort of see that there. So this is looking straight, straight down. If you're getting really close to something, you can change the view on that. It now makes it a little easier to access that view because it's permanently there. And of course, remember I said you can adjust the display settings. You can do that all right there. Brightness at daylight and at night at contrast. Most of us find that there's no need to adjust this at all. The Kia backup cameras are among the best backup cameras in the auto industry right now. And if you turn the wheel, what I like is the yellow and red line guide roughly where you're going. But the square line here, when you're backing into a uh, back, backing into a spot, this will line up perfectly with the spot. The side lines will line up perfectly with that, and you'll know that you're perfectly straight when in the in the um, parking spot, and you can straighten the wheel out. Uh, when those are, when the blue line is lined up. So that's just kind of a nice feature. The other thing you have, of course, on this car is rear cross traffic alert. If someone's about to walk one way or the other way or drive or anything else, you're going to get some arrows beeping and some blinking, and that will tell you, hey, someone's approaching. And that works with the hardware for the 
blind spot detection, which is right over here. Blind spot detection, of course, can see in the blind spot there. So it uses a radar plane in the back of the car to see when you're reversing to see people crossing your path, when you're driving forward to see people in your blind spot, and when you're parked, and this is important on this SX Premium model, when you're parked, it uses those um, blind spot detection radar bits to allow the car to lock or child lock the rear door. So if I'm parked on the side of the road right now and my little child wants to jump out into traffic, uh, if someone's coming up on the blind spot, the safe exit assist will allow the rear doors to be child locked to keep them from jumping into traffic. Really smart safety feature that this car has. While we're talking safety features, let's look at a few other ones. Uh, we've got forward collision avoidance. Um, up here is a little camera system. You've got a, a radar system at the front. Those systems work. Uh, the radar system, for instance, works with your smart cruise control. So your smart cruise control, what it does is it keeps the distance between you and the person in front of you when you set your cruise control, which is super helpful on a long trip, but it's even more helpful in, st helpful in stop and go traffic. In stop and go traffic, the car can accelerate and brake on its own. So when you're going up to 22 kilometers an hour, back to six kilometers an hour, up to 38 kilometers an hour, back to zero, and back to 20 kilometers an hour again, this can do that. So this is really good. And, um, and that smart cruise control works, again, in traffic, in high speed. And then you've got lane follow assist to go along with your lane keeping assist. Basically, what that's going to do is it's going to keep you centered in the lane. Once you stay, once you stay centered in the lane, uh, the car actually steers itself, centering itself in the lane. It seems really odd, but we all talk about Tesla's autopilot, and that's basically what this is. This is a very similar thing to Tesla's autopilot um, as far as keeping you centered in the lane, and everybody likes that. And that's what I found with this after we've had this car for a year, um, year plus now we have the 2021 model. Uh, people tend to really like this feature in their cars. We have it on a number of our cars now. Uh, they don't expect it, but it works very, very well. So it just keeps itself centered in the lane. Really good safety feature there. Uh, the other couple of safety features, little other features, uh, the car is capable of turning itself off at stoplights. So sometimes you're sitting there, car's up to temperature, you're comfortable in the cabin, the motor's warm, uh, you'll come to the stoplight and the engine will turn itself off. Why? It saves you fuel. It actually does. It also saves emissions, and when you have that, what it does is... Um, you know, it saves you that fuel emissions. And as soon as you release the brake, it instantly comes back on. Now, some people say they hate that function. Okay, have you ever tried in a Kia? Because they're pretty good in our cars. Um, it's smaller engines, they start instantly. Kia system works very, very well, and it's intuitive, and it doesn't turn off too often. Uh, if it's, for any reason, needs to stay on, it will stay on. So it's a good system there. All right, I want to show you another little thing that I like here. We talked about the remote start on the key fob. You'll see these three buttons up here. I don't know if I can get a good view of them. Uh, this also has what's called UVO Intelligence, and those three buttons are there to show you, and I mean, let's be honest, that's not what I use UVO Intelligence for. They're there if you need them. If there's an SOS button, there's a tow button, those kind of things. What I use it for um, in my car is I monitor all kinds of things. I get text messages when my wife leaves the car unlocked so I can lock the car. Um, so you can do things like that. You get a little, not a text message, an actual notification on your phone. Uh, the big thing is remote start. You can use it for that. You can use it to check the doors are locked, check the windows are shut. Uh, little things like that. Lock the door, unlock the door for someone. So really helpful uh, system there. Uh, and the big thing, again, the remote start from just about anywhere. So that's pretty cool. All right, taking a look around uh, over here, automatic headlights with the fog lights, which we will turn to the on position. We'll look at that a little bit later uh, when we get to this. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to jump out of this car for a second. I'm going to take your questions. So if you've asked a question in the past, uh, let's do that. Um, I'll get to them in just a second. Do me a favor, though. There's about 57 of you on. If you guys could hit that like button, it super, super helps me out. Uh, I'm going to turn the lights back on here for or the car back off for one second because I want to show you one thing I forgot to show you. Lights up here are still the same. These are some of the best lights we have in any of our cars. You don't get this on the Telluride. You don't get this in some of our other cars. You can turn all the lights on with that button. You can turn all the lights on by turning off the car. You can do individual lights by just touching the glass or the rim of this, and that works really well. Bright white LED lights, um, super easy to use, and kind of a cool feature. All right, let's jump out and see if we can get some more likes, and we'll go answer your questions. So let's do that right now. And... We still got a lot to show you. I want to show you rear seat space. I want to show you trunk space. I want to show you a couple little features that have changed in this car. There's a couple other tech features that I believe have changed. One of our salespeople says it hasn't changed. Uh, I am blocked by our motion sensor light, so let me just go over to where our lights are. There we go. Come on, lights. There we go. All right, it sees me. All right, 60 people on. I'm going to take your questions, and we're going to go right back into the car after I get to your questions. So let's start right here. Again, still going to beg for likes, guys. That's what I do. All right, Jasmine's been talking a little bit. Uh, F O O, what is F O O? Uh, oh no, I forgot what that means. Okay, 
Jessica, or not Jessica, Jasmine, I need you to tell me what FOMO means. I totally forgot for the tip of my tongue. See, I'm not cool. Okay, I know what that means, but I totally forgot. Okay, loaded package, but there are still blank buttons. Nice. Yeah, well, that's what happens. Uh, technically, this is not the loaded package. This is the premium. Uh, the top of the line package has a heads-up display. So that would be one of those buttons that is missing. Um, heads-up display, it also adds turbo engine, a dual clutch transmission, and it adds the Bose audio. So those are the main features that the top of the line trim adds. So when you say buttons missing, yeah, it's not fully top of the line package. Okay, if somebody's busy, they stopped in to hit a like, I appreciate that. Okay, are they not allowed to can on my 17 year olds parking sensors? Okay, so parking sensors was a question. So I'm gonna show you something about the parking sensors here. It actually says in the menu that this car has rear parking sensors, but you can't turn them on because it doesn't have rear parking sensors. It's just never been an option in Canada. So we'll keep going here. Do all models have a smart cruise control? No, great question. So the, the EX Premium that I'm showing you today has that, the SX model has that, but lower trim levels just have regular cruise control and they all do have cruise control. Okay, fear of missing out. Thank you, fear of missing out. See, I knew that, but when I'm talking and looking at stuff, I don't remember anything except for what I'm talking about. All right. What about the noise and highway coming through the window glass? I don't assume they changed something about it. Uh, I've driven this, it feels fine to me. It feels nice to me. I don't uh, have any issues with the noise. Um, so there we go. Somebody says town power. Don't know what that means. Any chance we can update the software on the 2021 models? Uh, software is being updated regularly on 2021 models. Uh, I'm gonna show you what, are, what is new here. I can't promise you every feature will be available in 2021 but some of it I can't see why it wouldn't be. So there's a couple little things there. Any chance Canada may see a Nightfall type edition in the future? I'm not 100% sure about the Nightfall edition on the Seltos. Uh, I thought maybe they would do a Night Sky edition is what they're called here. I haven't seen that in our initial um, shipment or our initial information yet. What we can expect is a burgundy leather option on the SX. That will be new for 2022. But I have not seen Night Sky. Um, okay. You can change the logo if you can change the entire plastic part. Somebody said you can change the logo if you can change the entire plastic part, and I disagree with you. Um, let me just show you why you can't change the logo. Both this old car, the old car, this old logo on the current uh, 2021, there is an indent there, so you would have to change this whole metal piece, and I don't think you're changing the back over here with the logo. This metal, this plastic piece is the old uh, logo rounded with rounded metal. That rounded metal is quite a piece to change because you've got a flat piece here and a flat piece there. So I said off the top, I don't think you can change the logos if you bought the previous model. Um, I stand by that. I don't think you can change the logos. Um, I don't think it would be worth the cost to do that for most people. So don't expect to change those logos. Um, that just doesn't look like it's gonna be a simple fix to me. Uh, I kind of thought the same thing with my 2020 Kia Soul. I thought maybe I could switch the logos. Same thing, you're not gonna be able to do that. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Glad there's no major difference in the 2021. Picking up my Lunar or GX Premium on Wednesday. Very nice. All right, let's jump into this uh, car. We'll continue to take your questions in a second. 70 people are on right now. Do me a favor, guys, hit that like button. Let's see if we can get to, I don't know, what's reasonable. Should we go for 60? 60 likes? All right, see if we can get to 60 likes. Do me a favor and we'll see if we can get there. All right, rear seat. I wanna show you the rear seat here for a couple reasons. Uh, let's actually just quickly show you some tech stuff that I did notice has changed. A uh, lot of information in here that I actually like. Uh, one thing that's changed, again, we've got this new software, so this comes with the vehicle like this, but you can make the old one look like this. You swipe across. Uh, valet mode is new as part of your Uvo intelligence system. HD radio data pro probably will not work for us right now, but we'll see if we can show. Yeah, Doppler radar. See, there's some rain in the area here, so that's uh, that's showing up in your Doppler radar, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, what's new here, though? I want to show you the setup menu over here. I want to show you the screen and theme layout. Now, some of you don't like this purple layout, there is a screen and theme layout. Now, it does not do what you and I want it to do yet, but the fact that it's there is kind of interesting. So when it goes to the split screen, uh, it allows us to choose what those options are. So remember when I cycled through in the backup camera? These are all checked off, map and radio media. There's some other stuff here um, that you can put in that right side screen there. So that is there, but the fact that it says screen, theme, and layout, there's no theme. So maybe in a future software update, we might get a theme change here. Some of you aren't crazy about the purple. Maybe there's an option. I don't know, uh, but that's interesting that it's there. 
Uh, some of the rest is just regular stuff here. Uh, Uvo Intelligence, or sorry, um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are not wireless yet, but none of the 10 and a quarter inch screens are wireless on these cars. I'll have to see about the 8 inch screen. I'm not expecting it to be wireless, but many of our 8 inch screens are, so we'll find out when we get that car in here. We'll do another video, of course, to show you. Uh, over here, what I want to show you is, again, setup, sorry. I want to go to the vehicle here. I don't think I tapped it there. My hands are a little bit dry. Okay, driving convenience, warning time. So these are a lot of your safety features. So just look at the safety features for two seconds. Highway driving assist, auto curve slowdown. So what it does is exactly that, assists you while you're driving with a cruise and that kind of thing. It can slow down for speed limits. It can slow down for everything else. Somebody said towing capacity. This is not a car that is rated to tow in North America. So you move, move to the Sportage if you want to tow anything. Uh, this car you're not. Warning timing, warming volume, driver attention warning. So leading vehicle departure alert and an inattentive driving warning. These are little warnings that you can get uh, if you're sitting there on your phone at a stoplight and the vehicle pulls out ahead, uh, you'll notice. Now I notice we go to a car wash where they park in the car wash and as soon as they pull ahead, we can enter our code while well, parking in that car wash and waiting outside it noticed the car, which was a good car length between us. It pulled head, I didn't move, and it beeped in my dash. So you can see that kind of stuff. Forward safety is excellent here. It's an active assist. It's actively able to brake the vehicle to stop the vehicle for some of the forward safety things when it sees a risk. Lane safety, it's actively able to steer your car to keep you in the lane. Blind spot safety, it's actively able to, um, you know, uh, provides warning of the vehicle. Uh, and vehicle control. So in other words, it's actively able to steer the vehicle away from the danger in a blind spot situation. Parking safety. Remember we said the rear cross traffic alert, we had that, and parking distance warning, auto on. There is no parking sensors. There are no parking sensors on this car. So weird thing, this happened in the previous 2021 model. Uh, the parking distance warning, it does not exist. It's grayed out, um, but it, it's in there, which is an odd thing to have in the software, given that there is no parking assist there. So that's kind of an interesting thing there. Um, but I want to show you the seat right here. Rear seat heating control. Now our... Come on, work. All right, we're back. Are we back? Somebody give me a thumbs up if we're back. Okay, <laughs> are we back? Somebody just... All right, you guys didn't stop. I still see the comments there. Let me know if we're back. Some of the regulars. All right, we're good. Perfect. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. I've never seen that screen on my side. All right, so James, one of our previous salespeople, says that this was in the previous Seltos. I think it wasn't. You guys can settle it if you have a previous Seltos EX Premium. But this is rear seating, so I can control the rear seat heating. Now, I love this because there's two levels of rear seat heating. So imagine I'm in the winter. I'm going to pick up my mom from somewhere. Uh, my mom's had some rough health things, so I want to make sure she's super comfortable when she gets in the car. Well, instead of having to reach back and find the button on the armrest there, I can just do it right here from the screen as I'm approaching her house and keep us uh, there. So you can see um, the pretty cool system there. You can turn the rear seat heater on. And more importantly, if you've got someone sitting in the back, they're not used to where all the buttons are. Oh, my seat's getting hot. No problem. I'll turn it down for you. So I think this is a little misleading because it shows the height of, again, the back and the bottom it's only the bottom as far as i know unless they've changed something that i'm really not expecting but you do have rear seat heat bottoms on this uh, car and you can change it from the front so i wanted to show you that feature because i believe that's new james our salesperson says no we've had that we have had it in the k5 i don't think we've had it here in the seltos in the past so just kind of some nice features in there and again the big thing i'm looking forward to is what happens in this menu right here screen theme and layout are they going to offer us another option of different themes different colors uh it's not there yet but the title is, says maybe that is, could be coming and a lot of us have asked for that so who knows down here automatic climate control while we're here uh single zone but it is um this probably this automatic thing so that works really well and down here you have wireless phone charging so your phone sits there. Now, some of the newest uh, wireless phone charging, let me just turn this off for a second. Some of the newest wireless phone charging have venting from the bottom, but there is uh, wireless phone charging on the backside there. So does the auto stop function affect wear and tear on the engine? Great question. Um, essentially, no. It's not like the tr traditional starter that kind of wears out the same way. It's a different system. Um, so every v every piece on the vehicle will wear out eventually but it is designed to carry the much 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 heavier load of starting that vehicle more often it's a way better system uh so some people get really concerned because they think oh i'm going to burn out my starter motor it's a completely different system so it works really well that way there got about 100 people on. i'm going to ask you guys for a like we're at that 30 minute mark normally what happens at this point is we try to wrap it up i'm going to stay with you guys because there seems to be some interest here uh so feel free to ask your questions but do me a favor while you're here hit that like button and we'll stay on longer for you the more likes you ha i have the more i'm willing to stay on for you if that helps 
All right, keep, keep flipping around over here. Again, the wireless charge pad with the vent in the very back, which I can't quite film, but it is in the very back, blowing over the phone, keeps it cool. Two USB ports there and a 12 volt port right there. So that's really good there. And you've got an automatic, or oh, sorry, electronic parking brake right here. All right, we're gonna jump to the back seat. We're gonna show you the trunk and the back seat as well. Uh, put the car back in park, turn the car off. Uh, this car does also have an auto off thing. So if you leave it running for the manufacturer's default is a half an hour. You can do half an hour or 60 minutes. If you leave it running or worse, you do what I'm doing and leave the battery on, but the vehicle not running, it will turn itself off after 30 minutes is the factory default, 60 minutes you can set it to. I turned it off for this video just because it, it dominates the display screen if I don't touch anything and I want to be able to show you those things. So really nice feature there as well. All right, popping out, we're gonna jump in the back seat here. So again, I had the driver's seat set for myself and I'm gonna flip the camera around here. The thing about the Seltos is the value of this car is really good compared to some of the like smaller crossovers. And I'm thinking Honda CRV type thing. You're getting way more technology for the base level car of a Honda CRV and base wheels. And you might say to me, hey, this competes with the HRV, not the CRV. I got news for you. We see a lot of CRV buyers buying this car. Uh, because they just want a small crossover that fits everybody. The HRV didn't fit everybody the same way the Celtos does. So here we are. We're going to jump in. I'm going to show you, show you, show me jumping in. Easy to get into this car. Good height. I drive a Kia Soul, and the Kia Soul is kind of, it never came in all-wheel drive, and this is kind of the all-wheel drive Kia Soul. The one benefit of the Soul is you have a ton of headroom in the back and good legroom. Well, the Celtos answers all those questions. Right down here, you can see I'm flat to the seat with my six foot body. I'm sitting behind myself. So I'm sitting in the seat behind myself. Still got shipping plastic on this car. That's what that blue is. Don't worry about that. Tons of space here, like a lot of space for a small crossover. A lot of small crossovers, two things happen. Your knees are up like this and they're into the driver's seat. That doesn't happen in the Seltos, which makes this car easily compete in a class above. People don't care about spending 10 grand more to get a little bit bigger car. If they fit, they're comfortable, that's what they want. So, got some questions coming in. I'm gonna get to them in just a second here. Take a look down here. We've got the um, uh, vents back here, USB plug and a spot. We've got a pocket only on the passenger side, plastic back seats, which are easy to wipe down. If you've got kids in the back, just wipe it with a damp cloth and they are clean. And of course we have the cool looking speaker grills front and rear, and there's your heated seats in the back. So we showed you how to adjust them from the screen out front, but you can also adjust them back here. The other thing that I want to show you really quickly, my seat also reclines one position on something like the Sportage. There's many, many more positions, but it does recline one position there. And that is a pretty comfortable spot. And the one big thing, a lot of time when you put your head back on the headrest in some of these cars, you're going to hit your head because the roof is kind of carved out just above your head. This one doesn't have that. I can sit anywhere I want and be well within. There is still a dip down. So when I'm sitting way in front of the seat here, yeah, I can make I can reach it up, but I almost can't, I can't press against the ceiling uh, from the seat bottom. So lots of headroom there. And again, when I put it back, I'm comfortable. Now we're gonna leave this seat back further like it is now as we go to the um, driver's area or sort of the trunk area. Let me just turn my light on here again by walking in front of it. All right, trunk area. So again, new logo right there. Gonna top, tap that button. All right, what we've got in the EX Premium is a cargo cover. Not every trim is gonna have that. I do quite like that. And when you have that cargo cover in, sorry about that. Uh, when you have that cargo cover in, uh, you have a little bit of a reduced uh, trunk space. When you take it out, you've got the full trunk space right there. But what you can do here is pull the trunk floor out like this, out like that. You can see the spare tire in there. Push it down like that, left-handed, one try, no problem. And you've dropped the trunk floor several inches down. A lot of people like it in the higher position because when you fold the seats down, you can slide something straight across those seats. Now, when you fold the seats down, there will be a step up into those seats, but it does give you extra space. And why do we need extra space? Because I've got a teddy bear. And when I have a teddy bear, I need to throw him in here and make sure he has enough space. Teddy bear is used in almost every one of my videos to compare trunk space, because if I take a Kia Telluride and fill the screen with a trunk, you can't tell the difference between a Celtos and a Telluride. When I put teddy bear in there, you can see how much space he has. And it's a lot of rooms. This is class leading space for this class of vehicles. So you've got all the space you need here for teddy bear. Again, raise the floor, lower the floor. And the nice thing is when that floor is raised, you have some under floor storage. So things like uh, gym bags, things like running shoes, those kind of things. Somebody said, yes, it's live. I guess I missed that. Somebody wants to know if this is live? 
Absolutely. Ask your questions in the side. And somebody says, it's a good kidnapping car. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Uh, but yeah, we're live. If you have questions, ask them right now. Go ahead. Uh, so there we go. We're staying on a little bit more than the 30 minutes we normally do. I'll stay on as much as 45 minutes if we have to, if there's quality on topic questions and I have no issues. And if you're not sure if your topic is quality or on topic, um, if it's about the car, it's on topic. And if it's quality, um, just ask it. We'll find out if it's off quality or not. All right. Teddy bear's back over there. And uh, we'll shut the trunk here. Trunk door, is it automatic? Not on the Seltos, never has been. I don't think it needs to be. Uh, you can get that on the Sportage, but not on the Seltos here. Uh, doesn't bother me at all. It's not that high, it's fairly easy to reach and uh, easy to do. All right, so here we go. 120 some odd people on, there was 140 people on a few minutes ago. Do me a favor guys, hit the like button for me. Nobody else is doing these videos in depth like this. Uh, my bosses need to see that this is worthwhile for me to do and they don't take my word for it. They want to see likes, views, those kinds of things. So uh, if you guys can help me out with that, that would help you out, help me out a lot and I'll try to help you. Does the auto stop start activate at stop signs or is there a few second delay? Okay, great question. Um, short answer is yes, it act activates at stop signs. You can kind of trick it a little bit when you stop a little bit and cruise a little bit forward. Um, sometimes I can get it turned on by hitting the brake nice and firmly. Uh, it doesn't come on, or in other words, it doesn't turn the engine off quite as readily as some other vehicles that I've driven from other makes. It also starts instantly, instantly. Like some people don't even know the car's turned off and started again. Um, so it has that instant restart. It is a better system in the Kia systems than some others. And I, I know a lot of people come in, oh, I hate that system. They get in ours and they didn't even realize the car had turned itself off or turned itself back on. Uh, so it is better in ours than some of the ones people complain about, but there we go. Differences between 2021, oh, sorry, I missed the question here. Let me just uh, run through some questions here. I'm gonna flip you guys back around so you look at something much prettier than me. There we go. Remember to put those mats in this car again. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. They added the 10.25 inch screen on all trends but the LX. That's not necessarily true in Canada. So um, we have an EX model here. So if you're in the States, you may have a little bit different uh, specs than us, but I'll do my best to show you what I can. Uh, would you say it's worth waiting for the new Sportage to come out before making a decision between the two? Okay, new Sportage. Let's talk about that really quickly. New Sportage is going to be bigger than the current Sportage. If you're thinking Seltos or Sportage today, uh, current Sportage, the Seltos is going to give you more tech for your dollar. The Sportage is going to give you more towing capacity for your dollar, and it is a little bit bigger. The next generation Sportage is bigger again. If you want something bigger than the, Sport the Seltos, and bigger than the current Sportage, but not as big as the uh, Sorento and probably priced in between. Um, you're gonna wanna wait uh, for a few months, probably six or eight months now uh, tops for that new Sportage to come out. This one is very similar to the current Sportage in size. A lot of people are finding this is the better bargain for them, but you do lose that towing capacity in Canada. 2000 pounds towing capacity with the current Sportage, no rated to tow here. Now I say it's not rated to tow, but let's just show you right here on this 2021 model, it's going out in about an hour or so, you can get an accessory hitch on that. So if you've got bike racks or something you wanna put in there, you can get roof racks, put your kayaks up top there. Now the thing I really like is you can spread some of these roof racks really far apart uh, to get a really good spread if you have a kayak up there. So you can do some of those things. So there we go. Okay, let me just see what else I can ask answer for you here. Got about 150 people on, I'm still begging you guys for likes. So we're gonna to try to hit a record for likes today. How car rank at safety? Uh, you can check out all the safety uh, specs. So the big thing with safety specs is people want to know how does it crash? Uh, crashes quite well. The bigger thing with safety is we want to know a couple things. Does it have really good lighting? The LED lights on this car are excellent. We can show you them a little bit later if you want to see. It also has to have collision avoidance now. You don't just care about how it crashes, you want to make sure it avoids. Remember we showed you earlier in the video, it will avoid. it's capable of avoiding a forward collision. It's capable of avoiding a lane change collision. It's capable of avoiding rear cross traffic situations. So you want to make sure you have collision avoidance systems and you do have that with this car and that makes it score very well on safety score. So that's a great question. Uh, there we go. I have... Da, da, da. Okay, well, I'm just going through your questions here real quick, guys. Uh, oh boy, there's a few of them in here. Uh, I missed the beginning. What's the major change 2021, 22? Uh, big change is the logo, a couple little minor software changes, and that's the major changes. Um, little minor stuff with some minor technology stuff, rear view camera, backup camera has some better features in there. Uh, I think it has that. Tire size, can they get changed to bigger sizes? Uh, so this one here is the same size on every trim level. It is the 215-55R17, that is the EX Premium. This is an EX and an LX wheel over here. 
EX and LX wheel, it's the same size. If you get the SX Turbo model, you can get the one inch bigger wheel uh, size. So that is an inch bigger. So if you want to go a little bit bigger wheel, you can do that on this car. And the SX uh, Turbo would be a good guideline of the standard stock size of wheel and tire combination there. So there we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, if, I, if there's a question I missed, guys, feel free to ask it again. There's a lot in here, some of it's comments and some of it's questions, so I'm just trying to skim and get them as quick as I can. I'm gonna like because you're so friendly. Hey, I appreciate that. I, you know, here's the thing. I don't particularly care if you like it because of the content or because you like something about me. Maybe you like my glasses. Whatever reason you wanna like it, it helps me out. And the more you guys like these things, the more I'm able to do these things. So um, I have more time to do these things as they become more popular. So that's uh, basically how it works. And I'm just trying to give you the best possible information I can. Am I biased? You bet I am. I work at a Kia dealer, but I'm gonna be, give you the best information I can so you can make the best decision. I don't tell you what to buy. I just show you what you wanna see. Why don't we see this on the Kia Canada website yet? Great question. Uh, short answer is it's pretty common for us here at the dealership level um, to get the cars before they go up on the website. So that's why I try to give you as, most, as much information as I can. Uh, it's great when there's a new model because I have a whole bunch of information to show. This is a model that's been out for a year, year and a half or so now. Um, and I don't have a ton of new information on here, but I can show you what the updates are and uh, that kind of thing. So they will put it up when the dealers have it. Uh, there may be dealers trying to clear out a number of the 2021s and they don't want to have it on the website until the until these are gone to get those. Uh, that's not a problem here at Brantford Kia. We don't have that issue. So there we go. Thanks for the answer. Thumbs up for me. Hey, I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, let me just go through a few more. What are we at? 40, we'll stay on for 45 minutes, okay guys? So four more minutes if you want. What I do wanna show is the lighting. So you guys go ahead and if you have a question that I haven't asked or haven't answered, uh, if you're here for the first time, ask your question. Why not? I'm a six foot five driver, so I'd be able to, would I be able to sit comfortably in the driver's seat with someone sitting behind me? Yes, I think so. Um, this six foot five, you're gonna be a bigger person in a smaller car. But the thing about this car is it's really nimble, it's very spacious, and I would bet that's probably at the limit, but I do think you could fit a 6'5 and a 6'5 person in here. Uh, certainly my boss is about 6'2 or so. He can do easily what I did with space to spare. So I'm assuming if he can do it easily, you can do a little bit bigger and fit them still fairly comfortably. It is a very spacious car for the class, um, deceivingly so. It's worth uh, heading down. If we're your local dealer, come on down and we'll uh, show you. Uh, if we're not, it's worth heading down to your dealer and checking it out and telling them that they owe me some money. I'm six feet tall. Yes, that's correct. I am six feet tall. Okay, I want to show you the lighting on here, the EX now. Real quick disclaimer about LED lighting. Anything that's not a headlight tends to often flicker in um, camera. It's not flickering in real life. It's just the way it reacts with the camera. But you can see this area around here. And if you watch some high-end vehicles on other review sites, you're going to see the same type of flicker. That is your daytime running light. On this trim level, it runs right through into here as well. On this EX, or sorry, LX trim level, it does not. It will stop right here and will not trim come down there. So it's a pretty cool little function. A lot of reflection right here on our uh, big windows here. So it looks a little extra. But when you come down here, LED lights, and they're really bright. And then you've got LED fog lights and they're really bright. You can see how they're kind of individually. If you can swing it in this car, I do recommend stepping up to the LED lighting. It is excellent. It's very white, it's very bright. It also helps you identify things at night because your brain is used to identifying things that it recognizes. And this LED lighting is closer in color to daylight, so your brain very quickly knows what it is. It's definitely something I recommend. Uh, so you have also have LED signal lights here. So let's just take a quick pick, peek there. Very cool LED signal lights. I haven't got them on right now. In the lower trim levels, your headlights are where your signals are. So you have round headlights and your signals are where your headlights are. So again, nothing wrong with that. You still have fog lights, very good projector beam headlights, projector beam fog lights, excellent system. I just really prefer the LED headlights. And again, you don't have to take my advice, but if you want to, there we go. So there you go. Someone says they love the LED lights on the SX Turbo. Rear lights, same thing. They are LEDs, so they're flickering a little bit there, but there's your rear lights. You have a signal light right in here. It is a red signal light. Backup lights are right in there. These are just reflectors. There's the rear view of the car as well. Again, still that new logo there. All right, one minute to go. We're gonna try to take some questions. We got to 79 likes, which is pretty cool, but there's only 152 people on right now. If anybody wants to hit that like button, that'll help us out. We'll stay on for you guys, but we are gonna wrap this up and we'll do more videos on this car very soon. Let me just double check your questions here, see if there's something I can answer to finish off these videos. Uh, would it be possible to talk about how to update the software? Um, I should probably do a video on how to do that. I haven't got time to do it right now, um, but you can download it uh, fairly easily 
To be very honest, I don't update software here. I have some people that download software for me, they put it in the car, and then I check what's new on the software. So I haven't done it recently. There's a website to go to. You download it to a USB, you throw the USB in. I have done that. Once you have it on the USB, you throw the USB in. Uh, so I'll have to make a separate video just because I haven't done that. Thank you for doing these videos. I wish more dealers did these kinds of things. Well, the reason we are able to do it is because you guys buy cars from us. So if you wanna buy cars from Brantford Kia, that helps. And also if you can't buy cars from us because you're out of town, just give us a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll be happy to help you. My bosses want to see that this has value and the more likes and subscriptions we get, the more I'm able to spend time with you guys. So I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks. Okay. We're going to leave it there guys. We've done about 45 minutes and I feel like that's good enough. I appreciate all the likes. We do this every single weekday, other than when I'm taking some vacation, which I will be in the next little while. Uh, but we do this every weekday on a Kia and Hyundai product. If you wanna see these cars in depth, we do it. We usually go about a half an hour, but this is a brand new car. Uh, so we wanted to go a little bit uh, further in depth. I wanna thank all of you for watching. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if it was worth watching for you, and we'll cover all kinds of things. And you can suggest cars, even if it's a car that's been out for two or three years, ask about it. We'll bring it back in the video bay. We'll go through a video, we'll do it just for you. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.